with a plan to utilize the proceeds from billions of euros worth of Russian assets frozen in Europe to support Ukraine with weaponry and other financial aid, stated EU Foreign Policy Chief Joseph Borrell on Tuesday. This week, Borrell received approval for the plan from a majority of the bloc's foreign ministers, and he is hopeful that EU leaders will endorse it at a summit in Brussels commencing on Thursday. This initiative comes at a critical time as Ukraine faces a severe shortage of munitions with efforts by the United States to secure fresh funds for weaponry stalled in Congress. We must know to match the speed of our response with the extent of this threat by quickly taking the next steps on redirecting the revenues from frozen Asian assets for the benefit of Ukraine. You know that there are 360,000 millions of resources from the Central Bank of Russia, which has been frozen. The EU, comprising 27 nations, holds approximately 200 billion euros in Russian central bank assets, the majority of which are frozen in Belgium as a response to Moscow's aggression against Ukraine. It is estimated that the interest generated from these assets could yield around 3 billion euros annually. And we have been discussing for weeks about uh, how to use the revenues of these resources. By the time being, we don't talk about the capital itself, but the windfall profits generated by these assets due to the high increase on interest rates. Despite some member countries, notably Hungary, refusing to provide weaponry to Ukraine, it is proposed that these windfall profits be distributed accordingly. Approximately 90% of the funds would be allocated to a special fund already utilized by many EU countries for reimbursement for arms and ammunition sent. The remaining 10% would be directed to the EU budget to support Ukraine's defense industry. I hope that we can reach an agreement soon and change banknotes into weapons because your soldiers don't fight with banknotes. They need physical arms. They need physical instruments in order to defend your people. The Kremlin swiftly responded with strong condemnation, warning the EU through a statement that utilizing frozen Russian assets to arm Ukraine would constitute an unprecedented violation of international law. The Europeans are well aware of the damage such decisions could inflict on their economy, their reputation, and their status as reliable guarantors. They will become targets for prosecution for many decades. The Russian Foreign Ministry also denounced the EU's action as direct banditry and theft. Some EU leaders, such as Belgian Prime Minister Alexander de Croo, have expressed a desire to allocate the windfall profits towards funding Ukraine's reconstruction. However, Morel emphasized the importance of preventing destruction in the first place. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz welcomed the decision, noting that it would enable the use of European funds to procure weapons from outside Europe for Ukraine. He stressed, this is about solidarity not economic policy. We will also remove this barrier with 5 billion euros in the European Peace Facility, which we have now agreed on. It will also be possible to do this outside Europe. And that is an important signal. This is about solidarity and not economic policy. Efforts by Kyiv to secure additional military aid from Western allies have yielded intermittent results. Germany is set to provide an additional 500 million euros in military assistance, including thousands of rounds of ammunition. Meanwhile, the Netherlands will contribute 
350 million euros for F-16 fighter jet ammunition and advanced reconnaissance drones. Germany, France and Poland pledged on Friday to acquire more weapons for Kyiv and increase military equipment production in collaboration with partners in Ukraine, reaffirming their commitment to support Ukraine amid a shortage of military resources. This is a serious moment. A new era is dawning, and will be there. And the fact that the three of us are united on this day, determined with the same lucidity about the situation in Ukraine, and determined never to let Russia win, and to support the Ukrainian people to the end, is a strength for us, our peoples, our security, and our Europe. While Kyiv's forces are hopeful for additional military supplies from Western partners, they continue to face challenges against a better equipped Russian army, particularly at frontline positions in Ukraine. The European Union's plan to produce one million artillery rounds for Ukraine has fallen short, while political differences in the United States have delayed aid for Ukraine. During an unannounced visit to Kyiv on Wednesday, US President Joe Biden's top foreign policy advisor, Jake Sullivan, reassured Ukrainians of the US's continued support in their efforts to repel Russia's invasion. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky emphasized on Wednesday the crucial role of strong US leadership in upholding international law. From our perspective, we are confident we will get this done. We will get this aid to Ukraine. And in the meantime, we're not just waiting. As Andre mentioned, just last week we announced uh, from the White House podium a package of $300 million of ammunition, air defense, and other critical supplies that are needed right now on the front lines, and we are rushing those supplies to you as we speak. Kharkiv needs enough air defense systems. Sumy region needs air defense. Chernihiv region and all our other regions that suffer from Russian terror. Partners have these protection systems, and partners need to understand that air defense must protect life. 